Mental health benefits of visualization. How to stop constant thinking and sleep restfully. Interview with Diane Wilgen. Do you struggle with turning off your mind due to stress and then fall asleep and get a restful sleep? Would you like to learn an easy to apply technique that may help you? Then stay tuned. As a guest, Diane Wilking will share her own story of using visualization and yoga that has helped her and helped a lot of her clients to overcome constant thinking, relax, and sleep restfully. You are watching Happy and Healthy Mind, episode 113. Thank you, Diane, for joining us today. Thank you for having me as a guest. Okay. So Diane here is a yoga instructor who strives to balance the physical poses with the other limbs of yoga in order to promote a healthy body, mind, and spirit. She has written a book of visualizations that can be used with yoga or as guided meditation without yoga. Guided meditation and yoga have each in their own right have proven for years to provide positive benefits. And I'm your host, Dr. Rosina Lakani. As an MD psychiatrist for the last 26 years, I have helped many people overcome burnout, anxiety, and depression. I know that there are some factors that are in, not in our control, but then there are others that are in our control that can help us prevent unnecessary suffering. And that is why I started this program. You see, our mind is the software that runs the hardware of both brain and our body. You know, when you are using a software, you need regular updates on it, right? Similarly, your mind needs regular updates. So we bring regular updates to you so you can achieve the optimum mental fitness and avoid uh, problems like burnout, anxiety, and depression. If you need specific advice, please contact your healthcare professional. But if you find this content helpful, then join our mission of eradicating preventable suffering by liking, subscribing, and sharing so more people can live and perform at their best with hope, health, and happiness. So let's learn from our guests. So Diane, share with us, what. how did this topic become important in your life? Okay, well, there's actually twofold. One is the physical practice of yoga, and then the other would be the, the mental aspect of both yoga and visualization. So um, I started doing yoga as kind of a Friday treat for myself. I always like to work, work out and thought I had to be lifting weights or doing all kinds of aerobic activity. And I started just because of somebody's recommendation going to yoga as my treat to help me relax. And so I did find out it not only stretched my body out, but had a lot of benefits of with the with my mind as well as far as allowing me to quiet my mind. Um, the instructor that I was going to always incorporated some sort of uh, meditative and or visualization. And so I became very accustomed to doing that. I started, my yoga instructor then became open to school of yoga. So I became an instructor. And part of what I do as a yoga instructor is to always include some sort of meditation. And usually that's in the form of a visualization to help twofold the, to help the mind helps the body relax, kind of like what you were saying in your, in your opening, but then um, feeling that relief in your body can also connect to, to your visual, to your mental state of being as well. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, so were you going through some kind of problems before you started applying these tools or it was just purely for relaxation? Well, twofold again. So I guess I kind of uh, um, skipped over that part. When I, as far as the yoga, when I started to have experience a lot of back pain, I couldn't do some of the physical exercise I was used to doing. And so I started doing more yoga, thinking and being worried that I was going to gain weight and it, it wasn't going to be enough. And I found out quite the opposite was it did help me keep my physical body um, healthy. And then it transferred to my to my mind as well. So the more that I did yoga, the more I benefited from 
the visualizations and that in turn led me to look more into the visualization, the meditation, mindfulness, all of those um, sorts of things. So it became at that point, just kind of naturally um, developed over time. And then when we had the COVID closures, I, of course, stopped teaching yoga face-to-face and just did my own practice at home, as, as many of us did. But just being out of the practice of teaching that mental component as well, I kind of let that fade. And what I was noticing was I had a very high level of anxiety, of stress. I had I couldn't turn my thoughts off at night, which has always been an issue for me and that I had managed it through the use of, um, you know, the visualizations and the, and the breath techniques and the physical outlet of yoga with the mental aspects of the visualization. But I just became, and then when we returned to work as my, or my full-time job as as an educator, of course, that was a very stressful time in education. And when I returned to work, I just, I couldn't, I was anxious and tense all the time. I didn't sleep well. I started to have, you know, more back pain and other, you know, physical problems. And I came to the conclusion that, you know, I was reflective, what's different? And I realized the meditative part of yoga or or without yoga, the visualizations, mindfulness, that that part of my uh, practice had drifted away and that I needed to reinstate it. So you need to remind, remind yourself. Mm-hmm. So once you applied it, how did it change? How did, how things change? After oh, you- well, it had lots of benefits. Um, I just became one, I stopped rushing around so much. When we slow our breath down, it helps us slow down as well. I became, I could focus better. And one of the ways, um, one of the things when maybe we'll talk a little bit about my book, but like before that, I could hardly, I was became so distracted, like at work, it was hard for me to finish anything. So I not only got back on track with being able to focus and complete tasks um, and responsibilities at work, but also outside of work that I became much more productive and energetic. And I also st- once again, I started to sleep a lot better. Now it's very rare that I don't, you know, get my get my required amounts of sleep. So all of those things, and then as well as you know, managing the back pain and some of the other physical issues that I feel like my my mental health had contributed to my physical health as well. You you brought up this point, and I was laughing with one of my uh, patients that even. Even people who teach these techniques, um, when they forget to practice, then they <laughs> struggle. So <laughs> even when I'm teaching a lot of mindfulness, when I forget to practice, then I also suffer. Like so, you you saw when mm-hmm. you stopped practicing, it's not just knowing is not enough. Practicing is what makes the difference. So even the teachers forget and then they need to remind themselves mm-hmm. and so i want to tell our audience if you know certain <laughs> things and you're forgetting it's it's a matter of just bringing it back reflecting and reapplying those techniques would help so wonderful our audience would love to hear some of the visualization technique because sometimes there's confusion what is visualization so why don't we start mm-hmm. from there what is visualization Well, visualization is to call to mind an image. And when we say that image, it it does, we always think of that as the visual image, but it does go beyond that into our other senses too. So, you know, what you hear, what you may be tasting, touching, all of those things um, come into play. A real quick example, I just, if your audience would imagine they have a lemon in front of them and just kind of look at how yellow it is and feel the kind of the texture of the lemon in their hand. And then imagine cutting it into fours and taking one of those wedges and just putting it in your mouth and biting down hard on it. (laughs) And you did it as well. So your body, even though you didn't taste that, you didn't taste the lemon, 
you still had that physical response to it. And so for there's a split second when our, our brains cannot tell the difference between something that actually happens and something that you're visualizing. So thus they, it has the physical, that physical reaction that a lot of people probably had when I said that. So you can okay, use that me, to me, your... Yeah, let me just kind of clarify that for people mm -hmm. who are listening and not seeing, when Diane oh. was walking us through that exercise, I made that lemon face because I felt like, no, oh my God, it's so sour. So yeah, my body yeah. had that physical reaction. So what were you saying about mm -hmm. this physical reaction, Diane? Okay. So I just to go along with that, I think most people are aware of that if you have some sort of trauma or some bad experience that happens to you, there's tr uh, triggers that you know, PTSD is a big example, but even if you're in, let's say a car accident, there's certain triggers, like if it was on a bridge or a certain section of the road that bring that back to you. And all of a sudden your heart might start to beat faster and you might feel, start to feel tense, uh, but you can flip that around with pleasant images or pleasant experiences that actually help you slow your heart rate and help you encounter some of those uh, same types of feelings that you had if you're, you know, whatever it is for you, if it's sitting outside, if it's by a river, by the ocean, whatever you would, you would denote as, as a pleasant experience by visualizing that and calling to mind some of those visual details, as well as sounds and scents and everything else, you can bring those positive feelings to to your mind and to your body um, even if you're not currently experiencing them yes wonderful wonderful so to summarize basically when you bring to your mind certain experiences that you've had in past your body may react similarly the way it had reacted before it applies to negative experiences. If somebody has had trauma, their body gets into the reaction when triggered, but it also applies to the positive experiences uh, when you bring to your mind, you know, the the vacation or the relaxation, relaxed mm -hmm. experience, or even, you know, looking at your child's face, you know, or connecting with nature, whatever, but just bringing it to your mind can make your body react in the similar way. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah. Well, that is an excellent summary. Yes. Wonderful. wonderful. So that is visualization. But as you were talking, you were say, using two, three different words together. So you, in addition to visualization, you used word yoga and you used the word mindfulness and you used the word meditation. And they're kind of all related. So can we mm -hmm. kind of clarify the difference between those four things? So let's go. You said visualization, we just explained. What about yoga? What is yoga? Yoga, boy, to put a definition, but yoga is, I don't know if I've ever clearly defined it. There's several <laughs> branches of yoga. Yeah. And uh, it yeah, is- Most of uh, the time, like, you know, when I, I hear word yoga, what comes to my mind is the physical practice of yoga, like in mm -hmm. a poses here and there. Yes. And kind of a slow kind of exercise, but Mm -hmm. But what I'm hearing from you is yoga is more than just physical postures. So when you said different limbs of yoga, what did okay. you mean by that? Okay, so there are eight limbs of yoga. And okay. I'm not going to be able to name them all off the top of my head, but a couple of them are breath and breath of pranayama, they call it, or it is the um, Sanskrit name. And then meditation is also, so that was one of the other words that, that you mentioned. So the highest state of it, or the highest limb, I don't know if, it, if highest is the right word, but the deepest state of it is that oneness and that clearing of the mind and just being completely in the moment, and present and kind of like rising above whatever your circumstances are. Wonderful. Yeah, I never had, you know, in a way I knew about it, but I did not understand that mm -hmm. yoga is not just the physical posturing of uh, yoga mm -hmm. class that you may attend. But yes, the other mm -hmm. aspect of it is the breath work, that visualization, the meditation. So we explained mm -hmm. what is visualization. We explained what is yoga. What is meditation? Well, meditation is a, a way um, to turn your focus internally. And so we have, we're 
There's so many external stimuli in our world today. It is allows us to turn our um, focus and our intention internally, and then visualization is a form of med- is a form of meditation. So Wonderful. there's lots of different ways to meditate. Uh-huh. Visualization is one of those. Wonderful. And then I know you're going to ask about mindfulness. So that's just being aware of what is currently of your current state of being. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, I, um, you know, the, the definition of mindfulness, the John kabat definition is moment by moment awareness, intentionally and non-judgmentally. So after defining e- all these terms, let's kind of <laughs> jump into how do you actually use the visualization and specifically what we said in the introduction Let's say I'm trying to sleep. My mind is going all over. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't turn it off. What can I do to use this tool to be able to calm my brain and be able to sleep better? So walk me through. Okay. I am going to walk you through um, one of them. I'm not going to, I'm only going to pick out pieces of it, (laughs) but just to kind of give you an idea. So one, I would just start with, and I'm not going to read through, but I would start with the breath practice. So sometimes it's just inhale and exhale, and then each inhale hold for one more, or it takes one more second and each exhale just to kind of start that. Sometimes when I, my mind is really busy, I'll start the breath and then all of a sudden I'll be like, somewhere else again. And so I'll just even say I'm going to do three or I'm going to do five, because then it doesn't allow my mind to wander. Give but I'm gonna... concrete, concrete thing to focus on. Three breaths. Yes, five yes breaths. exactly. So like, yeah, because sometimes like when you say stop, somebody goes. So if you say, slow your breathing down, then all of a sudden, your fa- your your breathing's getting faster. So you sometimes have to work with your mind a little bit. So in the, my exercises, like I have an opening um, so that like this would be the start of the visualization. So envision yourself by a small body of water, such as a pond or lake. You're comfortably seated or standing near the edge. Pebbles and small rocks are on the ground around you. Take a moment to appreciate how the sun reflects off the water, or if it's evening, how shadows um, stretch across the water as you continue your balanced breathing, because that's what I would have introduced. Close your eyes for a moment. Listen to the sounds around you, the breeze, the birds, insects, and feel the coolness of the shade or the warmth of the sun on your skin. So that's kind of a little start and then getting into letting go of some of those things. Open your eyes and look out over the water. Pick up one of the rocks and consider one of your concerns or worries as you look at the rock and remove the concern from your mind and place it in the rock. Calmly but with determination throw the rock into the water. As it sinks Watch the ripples surrounding it move further and further away, getting weaker the further out they go until they eventually disappear. When you look back at where the rock was thrown, you see no evidence that it was there. So you've released this worry. So obviously I do it a little bit slower than than that, but that is whether I was just doing it as a visualization alone, what I would start with, or it would be at the beginning of a yoga practice. So, and then I obviously can ask you to to continue doing that until, you know, your mind is, is freer. Wonderful. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. I could imagine. And I love water too. (laughs) If this, this is for our audience. If you don't like water, you can imagine any other. Mm -hmm. I, I use a similar technique. I call it floating bubble meditation where you mm-hmm. sit by the river and you let you see the water flowing and then you put all the thoughts that are coming in a bubble mm-hmm. and let the bubble go. But I also like mm-hmm. this thing about actually when you're worried about things, instead of you know trying to uh, just write each word, you can put your worry in the rock and throw it in the water. 
That's a beautiful mm -hmm. analogy. And I can see how it, it would get your mind focused on doing that. And in that process, actually calming down your body and your mind. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you just say, okay, stop thinking about that now, that doesn't always work. So some yeah. sort of, you know, like the example that you gave too. And sometimes if you, if you do one for a long time, you know, it starts to be less effective. And so then you might want to switch to like a, a, like what you described. And then later again, like you said, when you forget to practice and it's getting out of control again, it's like, Oh, I, I know that one with the rocks by the water that, you know, that worked for me. So I'm going to try that one again. Wonderful. Is there another technique that you can share? Well, what I wanted to say was then like in my book, I have like connecting through your practice and that could be through your yoga practice or like through your day. Um, if it was so how how you can use that would be like when you inhale, you know, see the the ripples really close together when the rock hits the water. And as you exhale, slowly see them to drift away until they disappear again so that it is, you know, something you can refer to again during the day and it only takes, you know, a few seconds. Or if it is in your yoga practice, it might be like where your muscles are the tightest. You picture, you know, those ripples close together. And then as you see your muscles or as you see the ripples start to get further away, you're just kind of imagining, you know, that that muscle loosening and, and relaxing more into the stretch. So I, that's like an in general example. In my book, I also have like specific poses. So like if you did this with this pose, this is what you might say. So that would only be if you're using yoga. And then at the end, or if you're only doing it for visualization, there's there's a closing or it would be at the end of the yoga practice. So as part of that is as you breathe, scan your body and note any areas that are still tight. Focus on one area at a time, visualizing the ripples becoming further apart as you breathe into that muscle. Then you uh, focus on the next part. And then it just says, ask yourself, allow yourself some time now to reflect on how your body felt at the beginning of your practice and how your mind felt and how it feels now. Appreciate the changes in your body and the ripple effects on your mind. So that would be like you'd have a few moments or longer in quiet. And then before I would bring people out of either the practice or the meditation, I, I call it a, a booster, but it's basically an affirmation. And this one is letting go of tension has positive ripple effects on my body, mind, and spirit. So that's so kind of how the that affirmation again. Can you say that affirmation again? Oh, I'm sorry. Letting go of tension has positive ripple effects on my body mind and spirit it's wonderful so you're letting go and then you're saying it loudly that it is having mm -hmm. positive effect mm -hmm. and you know yeah our mm -hmm. brain hears what we say so that's wonderful mm -hmm. yeah so i always too would try to before i bring them out of or before i wrap up like have them commit to how they're going to use that or how they could use it so there's a particular point of your day that is really stressful, like just kind of walk yourself through that. I'm going to, you know, when these 10 things are happening all at once at work or all my kids are crying at once, how can I use that in that situation that's that's more specific to, to me? How would you use it? Let's see if if you are in a, <laughs> in a situation where a lot of things are happening, what would you say to yourself? Well, just that pausing and, and connecting with your breath again, like I will, I will do, okay, so here's my to-do list that's, and all these things need to be done now. And I kind of just, obviously you don't have the time, like, 15 minutes, you know, if you're in the, in the midst of chaos or your kids are screaming, but okay, I, I'm throwing that, that item on my to-do list and I'm just breathing and letting it release. So it's not having the control over my, my attitude. 
Like it's not controlling my breathing. It's not controlling how I, how I respond. I'm still going to respond with calmness and um, positivity. Does that answer? Is that what you were getting at? Or? Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it is really hard in the middle of the chaos. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to ask. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in the middle of the chaos, if you have, if you've been doing this regularly, then you may be able mm -hmm. to remember and then mm -hmm. get that body's relaxed response even in much shorter time. And so, yes. And even though it's probably, you're, it's probably not going to take you, you know, to the level you maybe were when you did that visualization at, at home the night before, but it probably you will have some of that physiological response. And then I, the other thing is, and I know I tend to, and people tend to beat themselves up for it, but maybe like you go through all that chaos and it's just crazy. And then afterwards I'm thinking, why did I let that bother me? You know, or why did I, I really got out of sorts, but you can use, you can do it then just to get yourself, you know, refocused. So it doesn't have to ruin whatever, you have next in your day that you're going to try to do, you know, so that it's not ever too late. Mm -hmm. um, so if you feel like you didn't respond how you wanted to respond, just, you know, fix it before you go on to the next thing. Yeah. As soon as you realize you were not there, you're there. So yes. as soon as you realize that you were not practicing being in the moment or being calm mm -hmm. or positive, you can, if you do it even either, either in the middle of the chaos or in the transition between two chaos. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And sometimes I, I know when I used to run my kids here and there too, it'd just be like, okay, I'm waiting for a few minutes while I'm picking them up. And, you know, rather than scrolling on my phone, I'm just taking some deep breaths and, Hey, I made it here on time and it's okay. And yeah, yes, absolutely. So using some affirmation and can you use visualization even right there and then too? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. In the moment. In yeah. the moment. Yeah. And I didn't even realize we were having so much fun. We are past our time. So let's kind of wrap oh, up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's okay. kind of share with people. What is your best advice? You know, one take home message. My best advice is to uh, give yourself a moment at least once a day, but hopefully more to, to disconnect with all the stimulus and chaos around you. And just I mean, if it's nothing else, taking a few breaths, deeper breaths will help you. It will help your body. It will help your mind. It will help you perform better at work. It will help you with your relationships. It will literally impact every, every aspect of your life. And you deserve it. The people around you deserve it. But most of all, you deserve that. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you the so much. That it will bring. Yeah. And if people want to read your book, where should they go and tell us the name of your book? Okay. Um, the name of my book is Pathways to Peace, 20 Visualizations to Enhance Your Yoga Practice. And it is available on Amazon as an ebook or as, or in uh, paperback. Wonderful, wonderful. And if they want to learn more about all the things that you do, what website they can go to? Can you share your author's website? D-I-A-N-N-E-W dot A-U-T-H-O-R C-H-A-N-N-E-L dot C-O. All right. So, yeah. So, if you want to reach her, Diane W dot author channel dot C-O is her website and and thank you diane for sharing the gift and the gift diane is sharing today is called visualization exercise with reflection questions that is a chapter from her book and if you'd like that you can go to our website happyandhealthymind.com press that button resources and you'll be able to get this wonderful resource in addition to all the other resources our guests share on our program. And if you would like us to send a text for reminders and these resources link, then you can uh, text the word joyful to the number 38470. And we'd be happy to send you these reminders and resources. Let me leave you today with this question. Today is the first day for the rest of your life. Are you going to sit and regret why didn't you do something yesterday or the moment before? Or are you going to take that moment to take care of yourself? Do this focus on your breathing. Visualize 
how you would like to feel so that you can improve your mental health and physical health. And if you're practicing at night, are you going to practice the new technique that you learned today to help your mind calm down, stop thinking incessantly, and sleep restfully? Let me leave you on that note. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. Until next time, Dr. Rosina. And thank you, Diane, for joining us today.